Last week, here at the World Health Organization in Geneva, they have seen three extreme contrasting displays of the COVID-19 crisis. We dare to put this into cinematic terms, calling it the good, the bad and the ugly. The ugly. While people around the world are scared and desperately want to know where to turn for advice, they are infected by another epidemic, a dangerous epidemic, the epidemic of misinformation. This is a time for science and solidarity. Yet the global misinfodemic is spreading. Harmful health advice and snake oil solutions are proliferating. Falsehoods are filling the airwaves. Wild conspiracy theories are infecting the internet. Hatred is going viral, stigmatizing and vilifying people and groups. The world must unite against this disease too. We've been working with a, a large number of platforms and Google and Facebook, and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna list them, but I'm gonna forget to name them all. Um, with Viber and uh, WhatsApp, to make sure that information that is put out is accurate information. Um, we have been fighting this infodemic since the beginning. Um, there's a lot of information that is out there that is inaccurate, and we're working very hard to ensure that when someone searches for COVID-19, that the first thing that comes up is a reliable source. Our weekly guest, Monsignor Robert Vitillo, said that he has been very impressed by some of the staff at the World Health Organization. Who are extremely interested in involving the churches, the faith-based organizations. Uh, they made it clear to me when they first uh, uh, approached me to uh, work along with them on the guidelines on reaching out to religious organizations and also the guidelines on mass gatherings, uh, that they knew that the faith-based organizations and the religious leaders especially have uh, a direct access from the global level down to the actual local community level and that they have more credibility many times than governments and even than UN agencies. And then there was the bad. Bad news. The US president accused the World Health Organization of failing its basic duties, announcing that he will suspend further funding. We regret the decision of the president of the United States to order a hold in funding to the World Health Organization. WHO is reviewing the impact of our work of any withdrawal of U.S. funding and will work with our partners to fill any financial gaps we face and to ensure our work continues uninterrupted. The German Chancellor criticized the USA for their action and German Foreign Minister Maas compared it to throwing the pilot out of the plane in mid-flight. Last but not least, there was the good. Good news for the Germans, who, without a lockdown, followed the government's instructions for slowing the spread of the virus. Germany's chancellor announced last week plans to reopen part of its economy now. Und deshalb hoffe ich, dass alle weiter so mitmachen und die Regeln einhalten. Das alles ermöglicht uns dann ein kleines Stück immer weiter öffentliches Leben, wie wir es gewohnt sind, aber eben in der Pandemie, das heißt anders und mit anderen Regeln. What we do appreciate is that countries are leaving time. They're, they're taking some measures and they're going to wait and see and then see if those measures can be then further extended, further loosened, further adjusted. Uh, and we believe this is a prudent approach. And I think you'll see all countries in Europe eventually doing that. As places of worship for now remain closed to the public, Monsignor Robert Vitillo called to mind a reflection by Father Edward McNamara about whether people could attend Mass remotely through television or some other means. And the point was made by the author, who is a very famous liturgy, a liturgist, by the way, uh, that um, yes, indeed, uh, people can do this because it's not so much that you're obligated to go to church on a Sunday, but you are obligated to assist at the Mass. And if there's some uh, major reason why you cannot assist in church, then certainly this is uh, an alternative for people. And there's even a provision in, in, the, in a canon, uh, in, in canon law, uh, that says that in major uh, disaster situations, uh, that then uh, people uh, don't have the obligation to be in church, to be able to physically be present during mass. And, uh, and it cites uh, a very 
very old uh, uh, canonical principle that we can't ask people to do the impossible. And there was more good and inspiring news. Some of the biggest names in music are coming together for the one world, together at home concert, to generate further funds for the Solidarity Response Fund. But not just to raise funds, to bring the world together. Because we're one world, one humanity. Need to find a place. Guide us with your grace. The way forward is solidarity. The rule of the game is solidarity. Solidarity at the national level and solidarity at the global level. I thank you.